it is almost like going into a, a, a tunnel, a time zone, a nature zone. And, and it's magical because of that. People walk in it and there are lots of curves to the trails and lots of waterways and pools. And it, 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 it calms people down. It's a place where people can relax and feel so far away from the city. The magical calming effect that Arlene O'Brien describes can be experienced in Prospect Park, a 500-acre oasis of green in the heart of Brooklyn, New York. Featuring Brooklyn's only forest, along with a complex water system, woodlands, and waterfalls, the park includes a variety of habitats attracting numerous species of wildlife. It's also home to the nation's first urban Audubon Center, located inside the boathouse. Okay, let's get underway. Okay. One of the more popular features of the Audubon Center is a tour of 60-acre Prospect Lake from aboard the Independence, a battery-powered boat with a super quiet electric motor, especially appropriate for a trip focusing on the natural wonders of the park. If we see some interesting birds or wildlife, we can get up really close without scaring it away. And we get really close to the first wildlife we see. Yes, look at the turtle on the stump, look. And this one is actually sunning itself, even though the sun is very dim. It's still trying to get energy because it's a cold-blooded creature and it needs the, the warmth of the sun to uh, have enough energy to forage for food. Inspired by the pristine mountain streams of the Adirondacks, the designers of this park are the same pair who designed Central Park in Manhattan. So here we are in the middle of Brooklyn, and we may as well be in the Adirondacks, or yes. the Amazon for that matter. I mean, it is just no civilization. Yeah, you, you, you don't see any signs of life, uh, human life, I would say. It's very wild, and that was purposeful on the creators, Fox and Olmsted, who created the park. They designed it to give it a very wild sense, uh, a very rural sense, and that you're far away from the city. One of the, the great things that I find that people are very excited in the park to learn about is that most people think they have to go far away, for instance, the Amazon or someplace exotic to see great birds and animals, but they don't. They, have to, they can come here right in the middle of Prospect Park. People may be equally surprised to learn that there are over 240 species of birds that can be counted in any one year, including the majestic species we spot up ahead. When you see a swan hold up its wings really big, a lot of times people see that. They think it's very beautiful. That's actually a sign of aggression. And that means they're marking their territory and they don't want you to come near them. But we a have wood a duck wood right duck. There. Wood duck is absolutely st stunning species of duck. It's much smaller, as you can see, than the geese. The abundance of wildlife in just this one section of Lull Water suggests a clean environment and a healthy ecological habitat. When I do classes, a lot of students think that it's filthy because they see algae or duckweed on the water. And that's actually a good sign because that means there's food for creatures. But a very good sign of the health of water is the presence of dragonflies. Dragonflies are very susceptible to pollution. So dragonflies can't exist where there's a lot of pollution, and we have lots of dragonflies. So immediately when you see that, you can make the connection that the water is healthy. Another sign of the water's health is the number of fish found in the man-made lake. It does have quite a few fish. Uh, when they first dug it out, uh, they stocked it. Uh, bass, perch, pickerel, sunfish, catfish, carp, uh, eels, a whole variety. And um, it's a pretty self-sustaining population. It doesn't need restocking very often. Uh, and of course, all sorts of fish-eating birds are attracted to uh, the park because of the fish. Almost on cue, we spot one of those very birds along the shoreline. That's a great blue heron, and it will stay perched like that, very carefully observing to see if there's any movement of fish coming underneath. And then suddenly it could spear the fish with its beak. And when those birds take off, they, oh. they triple in size, Oh, they right? triple. His, oh, look, he's raising his head right now. He's very observant. He knows we're here. He's just raising it a little. Oh, there he goes. There it goes, flying off. Beautiful. Look at the wingspan. Dozens of other wingspans dot this skyline after spending the day in Prospect Park. I wonder why anyone would ever need to leave Brooklyn. Personally, I love to excite children and to make them realize that they're privileged in the city that they don't have to go far away and spend a lot of money to see great animals, particularly great birds, and that they're right here in the park. 
And I love to see that, that sense of awareness when they, oh my gosh, it's all here. It's all here for me to see. And it, I feel it empowers them and it makes them feel very positive about living in the city.